Queens. I'm your host DK and today I have one of the bosses bitches around me and uh, I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Hey my name is Zil. I do YouTube. Subscribe to me if you knew, if you don't know me at Life with Zil. Um, so I actually asked Zilka to come on because she's very quiet. She's very humble. She don't talk her shit enough. So today I'm gonna do okay. talking shit. Yeah, okay. Um, couple questions for you. What makes Zuka a boss? I feel like I'm a boss because I'm a go getter. I don't never give up. I don't care what the situation, what the problem is. I always find a way to make another income. I'm constantly looking for other incomes, and I just don't stop. Like I feel like most people stop when it get hard. I like it to get hard. I always say like, if you content or you comfortable not doing enough. I like to feel uncomfortable because that makes you what more. more like, right. Yeah, so, like, that's what makes me a boss. Do you ever feel like, like, every time you get, like, I already know you already, like you said, every time you get more, you want more. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like you're not doing enough? All the time. I feel like that's part of being content. I'm not content. I'm not comfortable. I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I don't want to be at the point where I feel like I'm doing enough because then I'd be comfortable and not wanting to push. Right now, I'm in the state of transferring, like transitioning into digital products. So I've been studying uh, digital products and Amazon FBA. That's like trying to make that my main goal right now. So no, I don't. That's that's what keep me going. <laughs> that's it. Now. Let's get into. Koi, you want to say hi? Yeah. Because we're going to get into the fact that you're such a boss bitch and you a mom. Come on. Walk around, say hi. Come say hi to YouTube. And he's Look. on the channel. When you subscribe, you'll see say him. Hi. Say hey, say hey, YouTube. Hi. Say subscribe to the channel. All right, bye bye. <laughs> All right, get out the camera. <laughs> Good job. Go sit down. So, speaking of YouTube. You're like a YouTube celebrity. And I say that because literally all your subscribers, like you got a fan page. That's crazy. All your subscribers literally come to my hair page and like anything. I, it's not even put, like they support heavy because they start supporting me just because they support you and you support me. So like they'll literally comment on my stuff. Like you have a, a fan page called um, Zilko Polis. Yeah, uh, that's the one. They go Zilko, hard. Yeah. I got four fan pages. They, I mean, that's what kind of got me popping on YouTube, though. I feel like, don't ignore the comments. If you, like, if you just now started YouTube, do not ignore the comments. Not like, engage. Bougie. Yeah, engage with them. Make them, even if they DM you, make them feel like you know them because they the ones that go hard for you. It be your friends and stuff that don't watch you, but the ones that you don't know, they created a fan page. They uh, promoted me on every social site. Even when I wasn't posting, they still was posting. So I respect that, and that's because like, and also my giveaways help me get closer to them too. Yeah. Doing them giveaways help my um engagement go up. So yeah, I, I always tell people if you get into YouTube, giveaways help. Yeah. And engagement, I help a lot. So how long have you been doing YouTube? Four years. Four years. So I've been on YouTube for three years. Wasn't taken seriously. Fourth year, I took it a little bit serious because I was watching DDG. I always tell everybody, shout out to DDG because he the one that made me want to go hard on YouTube. I've been watching DDG since he was in college and couldn't even roll up his window. And then I seen him go get this freaking millionaire, like, built. it was like a mansion built from the ground up. And we got, what, Maybachs, G-Wagon, Rolls Royce, all this off of YouTube before he even started rapping. So I said to myself, well, you gotta find out how to do YouTube because that's where the money at. Like, YouTube pay good money and then that's also passive income because you're making money in your sleep. You post a video, let's say 10 years ago, you still could get paid for that video today. So I also say when you start out on YouTube and your videos don't got no money on it, that don't matter because once you get monetized, you'll be able to monetize all your old content. So don't be posting like, I ain't even getting paid, I don't care. All that money gonna come back, so it don't even matter. This episode is giving million dollars worth of game, <laughs> baby, I'm gonna have to, um, yeah. yeah, you have to walk me through it. It's always, yeah, yeah, I know you've been telling me that for years to take YouTube serious and stuff like that, but it's, that's another thing, like, you know how you said you never content and, like, you just gotta be dedicated and consistent, like, that's one of them things, like, this shit don't happen overnight, you gotta keep going at it, so, honestly, like, this is my inspiration to so want to be with you, um, 
I just been watching you. Like you've been vlogging. Like she's always my hair model. Um, this is one of the girls that don't give. You can tell the girls that are penny pinching no shade to the girls who really got it. Yeah. Because this girl comes and spends over a thousand dollars on a wig or a hair day. Bitch, I'll be like, okay, when's Zilka come to get my fucking hair done? Because my record needs to be paid. Like, no, no real shit. And Zilka come out, I'll be like, I don't give a fuck if none of y'all bitches do. It's like, no. <laughs> For real, when you come with them, I'll be like, oh, Zilka just booked, fuck y'all. Like, no. it's, it's not It's not that I look at it like that. I feel like she's talented with the hair. So it's like, I like to try styles. I'm one of the people that be on the internet scrolling and I'll blow her and DM up for like, boring. I want this. Yeah, so. It's never boring. It's never going to get oh i just want to bust down little part mm -hmm. uh straight black it's like don't get me wrong i love me a bust down but i always try she styles. tried different stuff she willing to try colors and all that but you know what that that goes back into because that shit ain't cheap right so right. it's like if you want to look like a certain way you want to look like a, it costs to be a bad bitch yeah and also i keep telling people back to youtube yeah like anything you do is content People keep like playing like, oh my hair not done. Actually, getting that's your a hair video. Done, right, getting your hair done <laughs> that's is, a video. is, is, is yes. an investment for you. Yeah, because like, then you put it on YouTube, you make your money right back. Y'all come right. That's what I'm saying. And then it's I like, ain't never think about it that way till now. That's crazy. Yeah, like it's it's helpful, but I just feel like you can record anything. Stop making excuses like, oh my nails not done, my hair not done. You getting your nails done is a video. Right. You don't even gotta show your face. Uh, what would you say the hardest part about being a YouTuber is? I ain't gonna lie, the editing, the editing, that was, that was like the part that was making me want to give up at first. If you don't know how to edit, it's frustrating. But when I start learning, you can edit from iMovie on your phone, that's when my life started changing through YouTube. I start, I was like, the problems I was having, this is the part that YouTubers don't talk about and it pissed me off. We got these nice cameras, nice stuff to upload it with, but they don't talk about how it's hard. Sometimes you get errors from the cameras to switch it over. Or you try to upload a video, now the camera giving you an error message, even if you got the memory card, right. it's not uploading. You don't have that problem if you start from your iPhone. Turn it sideways, it ain't no excuse. Set it up and you go right in your album and edit. That's right. the easiest, like, I feel like that's the easiest way to edit. I, you don't need the camera. So you edit from your iPhone Yeah, I, I always edit from the phone. I mean, not edit. You film from your film and edit. Okay. Oh, I use the phone for everything. Cool. What would you say the easiest part is? Cool. The easiest part is. Like, do you ever feel like I, I know with me, I felt like when I was because you know I started my YouTube with vlogging, mm -hmm. um, and I just felt like my life is so fast paced. So I can't be the one to have my phone out all the time when I'm literally doing shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the time. I felt like if I was to be a vlogger, I need to be paying somebody to go around vlogging me all day or stuff like that. But then you don't want to put out more money than you're seeing at first. Like right, I said, it takes right. a while. Right. So that's like me putting thousands of dollars down to have somebody vlog me all day. Because my, my life is so fast, even when it comes to making hair videos. Like, you know, with, with you, I always make like a real or whatever case may be. But I can't do that with everybody because especially when I got clients back to back, it's like, damn. Damn, I forgot to put this part in there. I forgot to put this part in there because everything I do is so fast paced. So how do you keep up with it? I would just need a, honestly, if I don't like that, like if I had clients like her, I would need a phone running. Get enough space, that's the most important part, space. If you got enough, say you got, you only could need like 256 gigs on your phone. That's what I choose. If it's not 256 or a gig, um, gigabytes or above, I won't use it. If you got a problem like that, you got clients and you feel like the time, leave it running and cut the parts. Yeah. Just sit it, post it, let it run. Like that'd be the easiest. I would put it right there where you got your little mirror at, sit it right there, your clients, cut it in half, Right. Edit it out, even if it's copyright, because that's 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 what I should have said. The hardest part about YouTube, copyright, like trying to find uh, songs or say we right here and somebody start playing Beyonce in the background. Beyonce is going to get paid for our video, exactly. so you have to know um, some or it might be some matches on YouTube that be like non copyright and you still get copyright in the video. If somebody could have told me a long time ago that YouTube selection of music is non copyright, that would have helped so much. Always remember that. Use YouTube selection of yeah. because you'll never get flagged for it. You wanted so, to show me. Yeah, they got like a selection. Like you could pick, put songs, background music, and voiceovers over it, but it's no copyright. Nobody never told me that. Right. So, you learn that. so what do you think? What do you think is your is your best? How, wait, how many um 
videos do you think you put out in all that time? I probably got like a hundred or two hundred, probably two thirty, probably two hundred thirty videos up right now. So it's but, probably hard for you to like say for, but do you remember like off the top, what was one of your best? Bit? Okay, what was one of your most views? The video with you, our hair what? video. They got the most, most views on my channel. Literally, I think she did a hair class, or she might have been the one you did the hairstyle with the bun. It was all my hair videos that blew. And my other video that blew was the one I do with my nail tech. You see how like little simple videos right. is you getting your hair done in your nail tech? That might be the one. Another high view I had was when I got rushed to the hospital. My channel is about my sickle cell. So I basically do content about sickle cell when my uh, life is still in there. So they know Diamond. They know that I always get my hair done by her. So that's okay to put it on the channel. But I feel like if you got a YouTube, stick to one thing. If people know you for one thing, that's going to gravitate your fan base. Mm -hmm. So you started off with just talking about sickle cell and then you went into hair, nails, like a life with you because now most of your subscribers know you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So out of all the videos, do you have like one that you feel like was your best one? Like you actually had fun doing or was your absolute wow. best one? Like you could go back and watch it over and over again and it's just like you don't laugh or you do one. I think... Game. That one blew, but that's only because the title, as I said, titles are catchy, they get people to come too. That's only because the title said, True for a Drink, Deepest, Dirtiest, Darkest, Secrets, and Spoils. So people are newsy, they want right. to see bad things about you. We was putting ourselves up there, we wasn't holding back. Right. Tell the truth or take a shot. Videos like that is fun. That's what I'm saying. You could mix it up once you build your fan base, but I recommend until you get a fan base, stick to one thing, and that's it. And then you'll be known for that, and that's gonna bring that's gonna bring the traffic out. That's that's what I do. So, my, my brother was saying that he's like you everywhere. Like when I first started YouTube, my brother was hurting my feelings. He kept saying, "You're everywhere. Like you're not gonna never get no subscribers if you don't stick to one thing." He like you talk about this one minute, then you doing this, then you doing a regular vlog, then you doing a hair vlog, then you doing this. He like, yeah, Yo, you gotta build your fan base under one thing, right? And then you'll know. So. YouTube is just one of your many income. Um, you said you was talking digital. Digital products. Yep. So I took some classes on digital products recently. And I ain't gonna lie, I've been seeing, like, living here in this building, I met a lot of people. And what I notice is when I wake up in the morning, everybody works from home and they live here. Right. So I start asking their neighbors, what do you do for a living? A bunch of them is lawyers and doctors, but most of them make their income off of digital products. And I'm like, wait, so you just lay around one day? They're like, yeah, it takes no. maybe two, three hours to create, and you can still get paid from that 10 years later. That's where the money is because you don't have to have an Amazon seller's account. You can upload through um, KDP, Amazon, or you can upload through Etsy, BookBook uh, created for you, Canva created for you. There's so many ways. So I'm like, oh, digital products is where it's at. You know what I was thinking about releasing for my second digital product? How to get monetized on YouTube two days. I think that digital product of love. It would. People don't know. Exactly. And I know. So I think that's definitely the next one I'm about to write. Definitely. That's heavy. Yep. That's heavy. You know AI out now. So when you use AI you don't have to write anything. It will do it for you. Right. So. That's heavy. So plenty of jewels are dropped today. <laughs> uh, we're actually filming today from Zilka's penthouse. And I'm going to give y'all a little look of what the outside pool area looks like. But we're going to meet y'all in the pool. Right now, I'm single. And 
very much single. I was. Just, I'm, I'm freshly single. Put it like that. Okay. <laughs> um, without getting into it too much, why are you single? Because men are intimidated by females. They got more men in them. That is exactly what I was about to get into because I know being a boss like yourself, a lot of women that are bosses really run into that problem. So I wanted to touch into that a little bit. So how you feel about this? I feel like you shouldn't hate nobody that's beneath you because it causes problems. Because you could try to overlook the situation. Like, okay, I don't care. I'm, I'm dating him. Who he is? He can do for me. You can't date me and not do nothing. But right. it still cause problems from a male perspective. I'm not saying they feel intimidated, but they automatically get defensive. Like anything said about money or if the bills is high, not used to the range. I feel like they instantly try to start arguments as a defense. Like right. nobody has time for that. So I say don't date beneath you. That's where I made the mistake. With. So how do you know if somebody's like literally beneath you? Because you know how like when you start dating, it's like okay, he cool. Like he normally a lot of with, with a lot of entrepreneurs or both which is per se. Um, when you start like dating, of course, like if you have en enough to make me happy, like I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But how do you know if somebody is going to like, is there certain vibes or certain things they say that you know right off the like it's a bill? A bill. It's how so right it's that we know. Ooh. Yes. If you're dating me, you can't date me and not do nothing. Uh, of course I'm going to ask. I feel like girls be trying to be kind to like do something. I'm not giving you a bill that's like, oh, pay my rent, pay 5000 No. I might tell you pay a cable bill, you can help with a food bill. Sometimes they ain't even gotta be just a bill. They just, you can give me something to help. It's the energy right. and the way they go about it. So like do you I ask? Say, yes, or? I do ask. I, I very much well ask. Yes. Would you get mad if, um, like, because in certain, certain instances, I feel like, like As a man, no. somebody shouldn't have to ask. Yeah, right, it should right. be something. If you know that this is my life, you know that this is what's going on. And if I'm talking to you day to day, then you know, like, as females, we might be like, oh my god, here comes the first come in or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you don't initiate an ask, do it make you feel like a type of way, or and then at that point you ask, or you no, ask off the rip. I ask off rip because I feel like I have no uncomfortable conversations with men that females don't be wanting to have. And I also have a lot of men say dumb things to me like, oh, well, if you want to be with me, we not going to be living here. You want to dumb it down a little really? bit. Really? I'm not cutting my lifestyle down to please you. Like, they'll say the rent is way too high here. They're not doing that. Okay, well, you're with the wrong female. Right. Find the next chick. Men be used to, like, chicks being, I'm not saying pick -nies, but, like, they try to accommodate themselves too much to them. Me, I get called mean because I'm not doing that. If yeah. you can't keep up, and a lot, of, a lot of women will like say things and do things to boost men's ego. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, you really gonna have to be him with me. Yeah, like, you're not, I'm not boosting your ego to make you feel like. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna put you down either. And I also but it's like I'm not. Yeah. To get him ways to get money, you can't make. I honestly get feel like when you're money with a boss, period. That's what comes with it. Like even if you're, you, you might be a boss, um, a masculine boss, and we're gonna be up for something. But I feel like. If you with the right female, your life is going to level up regardless mm -hmm. of what. Because I don't know, it's just like certain things. Ev behind every good man is a great woman. Real So I just feel like that's just how it. it and I learned to look at the exes. I used to always be like, I didn't care about what a man ex was. They ex will tell you everything about the type of females that you're used to dating. Like this man kept saying to me, "You the best chick I ever had," or "I never if dealt with a female." Yeah, like why are you telling me that? Yeah. Or don't call me like big zip. Let me feel like I'm oh my god, you. I was just about to say that. You don't want all the money. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I was about to say that. I was about to say, I was literally about to say, how do you feel like what, what is the what is some signs that you know that somebody broke or intimidated? Right. Like um, maybe like I'm trying to get money like you. Right, right. Like what do you mean? Yeah, no, seriously. That's an automatic red flag. Or, or like if you say, well, we're not dating. I'm used to going on dates. Niggas act like it's a problem to take you out with a date every weekend. Like that's what I'm used to. I'm not gonna thumb my lifestyle down to be with you. So how do you feel about if you're dating a man and he might not have as much as you, but he could probably kind of meet you halfway? Do you think, are you the type of girl that would be like, I'm cool with going hand-to-hand? -hand? I'm not cool with 50-50. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. 50-50, I feel like, why am I going half with you? 
with you, but I can do that by myself. Right. A man's job is to provide. Fair when right. you agree to come live in a female household, that's her order, her stuff. She was doing it for you without you. Once you agree to, you know, accept it coming to her lifestyle, I feel like you agree for them bills too. Right. I'm not saying that, oh, you got to put everything on you, but if you want to be the man of the house or you want to live here, you want to sleep here every night, use the water, do stuff, yes, you need to be taking care of things. And then a the female with me, I reciprocate. So it's not like you doing all of this. If you if you had a rainy day, I could at least help you. With, with or without you, the bills is going to get paid. That's right. what I tell men. I'm not asking you to do this. If you want to be part of my life, this is what this I require. Right. 50 50, I feel like that's her roommate. You starting, like, it's going to be nothing but problems. Yeah. I'm going half, you're going half. We arguing. Now it's like my respect level for you is a little different because I'm not looking at you like, oh, my man got it. I got a class with head. Right. I can't turn to you for nothing. So I don't feel like. Yeah, I said that because um, Gabrielle Union. Just had a Gabrielle Union just had an interview where she was talking about how she's still, even though she's this big actor, top actor, she's married to a, a NBA star. You know what I'm saying? But she's still she, 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 she feel like she's still struggling with trying to keep up with her head. Right. And I, I, I personally pulled it out and looked at their network. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're not even worth half right. as what he has. So why do you do that? Because some women feel like, oh, if a man do everything, they gonna feel like they got one up on you. I'm personally the type of girl. I want a man to, to say, yeah. oh, I did this day the third eye eye. Because that's what you're supposed to do. I can tell you a quick story about that. Go ahead. My mom, I used to get on my mom. I used to judge her. Now I salute her. I used to be like, your man pay all the bills. He do everything. Girl, you treat him like the scum on the bottom of your feet. Do you notice the females that treat them in the worst is the ones they be worshiping? Yeah. The ones that be sitting there trying to do everything is the ones that get played. It's like men know who they mess with. They only do what you allow. She set that standard from the grip. He's paying the bills. He take her out. He make sure we good. My sister good. Anything. And my mom, it's not like you know, that's her man, but she still act stinking. Like, yeah. like I kill for a man like that. Right. She be like, for what? Because when you when you treat them with love, that's when they love you. When you give them their ass to kiss. They appreciate you, and it really do seem like that's. It's like the more meaner I've been to men, the more they've been respected. The one every time I try to be the down chick or the one bride, I get played or look stupid, and the next chick can get everything I was asking for. Right. So no, now I learned to be mean, speak up, be arrogant, and say what you want. Those mouths don't get fed. They let old chick that uh, ask for nothing get everything. That's bullshit. A chick that asks for nothing gets nothing. The girl that speak up gets it all. Right. Like I. I don't know. I, I feel like, I don't know. It's like, because me personally, like, I got a, what's your sign? A cancer. You you and my mom got the same sign. Cancer. Well, cancers are mean as shit, but they sensitive too. <laughs> but I just feel like, me personally, like, I'm so, like, I'm just a lover girl. Right. Like, I don't want to be mean. If I feel like I got to fuck with you and I got to be mean or be this kind of way, I don't even want to fuck with you because that's not me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it should just get weird, but. And if you spoil I'm spoiling you. Like, if I know my man got me, I might be in the mall and be like, this is what this is. Let me get Girl, this. I might like these sneakers for him, but that's because I feel like you're taking care of me. Yeah. I feel content. I feel comfortable. I feel safe with you. It's like you treat me good, I'm going to treat you better. Like, yeah, these, these men is like a lot of real sassy. These men are in a fucking soft girl era. Okay, so if it was a situation, you're dealing with a guy, and you know, things are going good, he's able to handle all the bills and stuff like that. Um, but you know he can he run into some situations and the situations because you know when niggas niggas will like to say that they been fucked up like oh it's a fucked up time right now but just how I've been fucked up for a year right like, how right. long you gonna be fucked up right thing? I'm not about to keep hearing it right right and again if it was to, to run into that situation and it's like now he can't really carry the weight but he can do something what bills do you think is is good for a woman to pay what bills is good for a man to pay like if he fucked up and it's us trying to pick it up the whole yeah but it's been a long ass time. That's and why I, I say, say you feel a bad shit. Stop yeah. feeling bad. You you can't provide by. I feel like you should not date, and it's not even sounding harsh. You should not date if you're not financially stable. Why get into a relationship if you have no money? As a man, it's certain things you're supposed to be doing regardless. Now, we together and you was already handling things and you got messed up. I have no problem picking it up, doing everything because hard times don't last forever. But so when you, you meet a guy and start week, dating a guy that's doing hard times? No, no, no. I mean, we build a man up, they go to the next shit. No, no, you gotta come to me already financially stable. That was the mistake that I used to learn. Zip said try to come build home. I used to try to build me or, ooh, it's okay, I'm gonna help you get some money. 
then when they get up, they run right to the next shit. No. Right. I'm not going to serve you, please. I'm not building you up. You should not be dating if you're not financially ready. I just feel like when niggas, now, this might be a, a different kind of, um, this might be stereotypical, but a lot of things with women are stereotypical. So, I feel like a woman can kind of go on dates if she don't got it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, if a woman is not in her best state financially, I feel like it's okay for niggas to talk to you, but I mean, really? if you fucked up, why you even come at me? You could have left me the fuck alone. When you know, that's just like you go into a bar and the men be like, What's cool? why got your shots already? Because we're female. That's Women can really go out if, with no money. This new generation of men act like they go out without money and act like they want you to pay for it. Because they're in their soft over. girl era. I hate it out here. I, I'm leaving, and that's that's what people say. You leave too fast. It's not that I leave too fast. I feel like I'm not for the bullshit. Put it like that. Like it's it's a whole lot of bullshit with these men out here, and that's why I'm not in a relationship. We just got to argue over a five dollar total. A five dollar total. <laughs> After that, it was over. But like, that's how you know it's not about the five dollars. It's some deeper shit. He felt like he just took us out to eat. Um, he felt like he been putting uh, gas in the tank all week. But I feel like you're counting favors. But yeah, and that's light shit. That's light shit. Like that. That's what you're supposed to do. So you're taking like, me out on a date. Why are you not the whole fucking thing? Oh, oh, I didn't bring any money out with me today. So we thought we was going to the movies, and I was supposed to cover you. You see what I mean? These men is like, it's like who be raising you? Because when I got a son and he grow up, I'm telling him, you're the provider. No, it's not letting a female usually get over, but that's the standard with a man. Right. Like, you're not a man if you can't provide. A man provide, protect. Half of these men can't provide. They can't protect you. If a gun go off, they run it off on you. They're not men no more. So it's like, yeah, I, I blame the mother and the father, honestly. So how do you feel about dealing with, because the majority of the guys, Unless they're a little bit older, I mean, don't get me wrong, some of the young guys are going to start to be on some shit like nowadays. Mm -hmm. But, majority of guys that can meet, I'm going to say our, because I'm speaking about all boss bitches, all entrepreneurs, bitches that's getting to a couple dollars. Majority of the men that can kind of meet us are drug dealers. How do you feel about dating like a drug dealer? Or, the, or dealing with somebody that's in the streets, because you know a lot come with that. I feel like the drug dealers are both. The streets is not where it's at anymore. They the main ones that got problems. And this coming from somebody that's been around for years. Like, it's not the same. Since the economy dropped, prices then went up in the real world. And in the drug world, they didn't decline. Every drug dealer I know or every friend of mine that, that even is dating one was saying that their man is having problems. Like, it's too slow right now. You have to find another income. And that's the part that pissed me off about these drug dealers. They act like the drugs and they just gonna be able to flip it forever. Why don't you try to get into something legit? Right. Find another hustle. I call it being lazy. You would get these men a million hustle. You can't force somebody to do something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I feel like I'm, I'm being your mom. Why do I gotta tell you this? But you know what's crazy though? It's literally not just us though. Like it's not just us, like our generation. It's not because you got men that's older that are literally stuck because I feel like the, the guys that are, that are from the streets. They are stuck in this mentality. Exactly. The guys in the streets are the most ones that's talking about, oh, we want to get into real estate, we want to get into trucking, we want to get into this and get into that. But that shit is like not, it's not hard, but it's not as easy coming from drug money because drug money is so, what well, was so fast. You know what and I'm just saying? just as fast as it comes, as, as fast, fast as, as it goes. Go. Like, what I know is this, the men that be designer, they want most to be the brokers. I see all the drug dealers outside posted up, but these the same men. Mary head to toe, but going to Chinese store ask you for twenty dollars. Your priorities fucked up. Right. See what I'm saying? Like so yeah, it's crazy out here. So is it safe to say that being a boss bitch or entrepreneur, a get money bitch period, that affect a lot of relationships in your life? A lot of friendships. Get into that a little bit. bit. Friendships, I feel like it's affected because it be secret animosity. Like, and I used to be hurt by it, but the way I look at it now is, imagine growing up with somebody and y'all been doing, or y'all been at like the same pace in y'all life, and you just start rising past that person. They start to question themselves, like, what am I doing or well, why is she doing it and it's not me? And it's like, I feel like females specifically put little shady shots. I don't like that. Like, a friend is supposed to cap for you regardless. 
I have people that try to argue me down about living here. Like, every day it's an argument about why you pay so much more rent. Like, they're paying it. Like, I don't understand that. People don't understand that everybody don't want a house. Like, a lot of my friendships fall out because they'll ask me, not me bringing it up, how much is your rent? And I'll tell the price. When I tell the price, I'm automatically judged. Oh, you just, you just pay for two or three houses. That causes conflict. Why are you concerned you're not the one paying for it? Or maybe I'll work there to get to that place in my life and I'm proud and I wanted that. Like, I just told you DDG was the reason why I wanted to do YouTube to want everything. He done had every floor to sell a window of the house there was. That's how you can start learning about stuff. Like, I finally got to the place where I wanted to be. Friends can't accept that. Like, they talk about you. Or they make little comments like, well, if I had this or if I had that, I could be living like you too and all of that. Like, that's weird. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, do you ever feel like, do you ever feel like that it's them trying to like, because I know me, if I see my friend like might be, not saying you're doing too much, but if I see my friend like biting off more than she can chew, I'll pour her cold. Do you ever look at it like my friend might be concerned about my living versus like, or do you just automatically think, I feel like if it was a concern, then they would tell me from a place of being concerned. They be saying shady things that make you look at me like, are you jealous or are you happy? Right. Like, say, say if you're concerned, you will say, well, I think it's kind of high. Maybe you should put that in the house, stack your money, and you're right. doing so much more. They don't come off like that. They come off, well, she not paying that. I be trying to figure out how you do this every month. Or why is your uh, rent so high? Or what do you got to do to get that? Or shit. Uh, a nigga probably paying her rent so much. Like, I hear a friend that's genuinely concerned will tell you, like, rent too high, you need to cool off. Them, they worry about if you sleep with somebody to get it. If you wear um, just for the aesthetic to try to show off. Like, somebody told me I needed to humble myself. I would never When I don't even understand shit. how, because you're the most humble person, person I know in the world that really could talk your shit, but don't. Like, I don't, I don't understand why it's always a problem. People act like it's coming out of their pocket. Like I said, a place of concern, it's, it's a way you say everything. Right. Females make little slick shots about my illness and things that I do. Like, you know what I mean. Yeah, if I was if I, if I I was doing that, I could do this too. Or if I was in that predicament, it'd be easy for me too. And it's not easy. You can have the same thing as somebody and still don't do anything. It's about how you go about something. Like, me, I strategize everything, and I feel like a lot of the girls that I used to be friends with that I'm not friends with anymore was counting my pockets. That was the most weirdest thing to me because, like, they used to be on my YouTube videos trying to track money from that, or they say, well, she getting this, and she should be only making this, so how can she afford this? And right. Like, they know I have other, other incomes, incomes on the side. Yes. I don't have to speak or everything. A lot of incomes that people be having, like, especially with, like, real estate, you wouldn't know who do real estate unless they're, like, this like a like a realtor or like something like that because you're not gonna if you do real estate you're not gonna go post and like oh i just worked this house today unless that's like well i mean you right. can pay for instagram now right. so all of that be content but a lot of people you don't know where everybody's income be at because you only post like if you for instance me a hairstylist and you go ahead and post all kinds of houses of content or whatever thing because that's what people book yeah. But nobody's booking you to buy a house. You know what I'm saying? Or, or this will happen. Now, this was recently happened to me. I was a, a girl that I didn't even know. She was saying like, oh, I see you talk about on your YouTube about Amazon FBA and stuff. And it's frustrating for me. I want to get into it. Like, I look up to you when it comes to that. I never told nobody about me learning digital products, Amazon FBA, all of that. I took several classes to learn it. Because other females didn't attempt to hustle when it didn't go the way that they wanted they put it down like, oh, she's not making that from that. There's right. no way. I tried that. How do you know? Everybody is different. It's the way you do something. Maybe you wasn't working the correct ads. Maybe you didn't have a correct product. And for real, for real, I could really give you a free piece of game when it comes to the drop shipping and digital product. The easiest way to scale money through that is to type in TikTok me be buying. That's how you know. Or you can go to Amazon, you can click on the product, look at how many units were sold. Take the price that it got, take your calculator, calculate it by that unit. That'll show, show you what you're going to make. So that's why, that's why I got to the journals. I went on Amazon. I see the little journals with just making all this. But girl made 400K in a month off of a journal with pages. You know what? The so, thing about it is, but a lot of people, they'll yeah. say, like, that's one one in a million. 
Like yeah. everybody can't do it. Like it's just rocket science. So a lot of people will, will really downplay it, but it's consistency. Look, look, just made a whole journal. Yeah. Look. Like, and it's 25, probably 30 pages. But nobody will think to do stuff like that. It's passive income. Right. You sleep. You upload it once and you constantly get money. You can't just think that you upload it and it's going to blow. No, you have to run ads around the product. TikTok, go to TikTok. That's what really scaled me money for. Like, or let's just say Pulse is getting low and the bills is due now and you need money to accept. Yes. The smartest thing I would do is print on demand or I would do something with Etsy or Amazon. I would go straight to TikTok. I would make a video around the product. Whatever that is, even if you get a thousand, I would put a link in your bio. I didn't get to a thousand um, followers on TikTok yet. That didn't stop me though. All I say is go to the uh, Instagram bio and you can purchase. Or you can send somebody a direct link. It takes nothing. If somebody wants something, they can get it. People, I feel like, doubt themselves. So there's so many something. streams of income. Yeah, so like, many. There's so many yeah. streams of income, and people don't realize it. Like, a lot of people, the problem is, a lot of people that has a business or that does anything, a lot of people just say, okay, I have this business because they want to be known on Instagram or social media that they have this business. Mm -hmm. They don't want to actually have a business that actually want to pay their bills. A lot of people, businesses are not paying the business bills, home bills. The point of having a business is to actually make the money. Right. And people be forgetting that. A lot of people are so caught up on social media image that they just want to be known the owner of right. and the buyer. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? No, seriously. And they don't want to put the work in. It's not an overnight thing. I literally just told you that. I was stressed out when I first tried to upload to Amazon KGP. Me and my cousin, she literally sat there with me. We watched over 100 YouTube videos and it kept saying, fail publishing, fail publishing, fail publishing. Every time I would try to upload it. But I didn't give up. People would be like, oh, fuck this shit. Yeah. I'm over this shit. That's too much. I ain't even gonna get a word from it anyway. I always say the one thing that you're scared to do or the one thing you feel like you're pulling back is the one thing that's gonna change your life. I didn't want to do YouTube. Um, and I did. It's like I wanted to do it, but the views are so slow. Yeah. People always got something to say like, oh, she posted. You can't care about that. She posted, but ain't got no views. Who cares? Now, when I posted, oh, you have been welcome to the YouTube Partner Program, now it's, oh, I'm so proud of you. Right. I knew you was going through it. I watched you love. Like, bitch, no. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like people don't support you until, I guess, it's popular. Until, to yeah, until, like, they, until they get weird. validation from other people to support yeah. you. Now it's, oh, that's my friend. That is very weird to me. Like, the way I look at it is, this is my first kid. I don't have a choice. I'm a single mom. If and, and the way it works here is like if you miss one ring, you're automatically evicted. So you can't. It's it's not like a game. It's this for real. If I don't get it done, for me and my child is on the street. People don't look at it from that point of view. Like, or I'm going hard because of the simple fact I got sickle cell and I can leave this earth anytime. I really feel take like care of my I, I really feel like because of your illness and everything like that, I feel like you deserve everything that you. Not only you deserve it, you work hard mm -hmm. for that shit. And I've seen it first thing since we was pups. Like, mm -hmm. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. So I don't see how anybody that's close to you could hate on that fact. You know what I'm saying? Though, and that's the part. I'm the person that's happy for everybody. I don't like to talk down on people. If you tell me you do something, I'm supporting you regardless. I never received that. And also, like, you can't tell your ideas with people. People don't got the same vision as you. They'll That's the arguments. Problem. Like it's not even that they take it in front. They put you down before they know what happened, or they say That's oversaturated, or and it's already getting negative like energy into, yeah. into what you got People going on. People are not you. They're not gonna do it your way. Like okay, so if I say I wanted to sell here, everybody need mom sell here. Yeah. You can't market it like me. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like you don't know nothing about Facebook ads. It's TikTok literally ads, enough money out here for everybody to get. Literally. That's what I'm saying. Like, stop doubting it. So I just feel like a lot of the jealous or girls that act jealous, it comes from, that's projecting. <laughs> Don't think so. They see you do it and want to hate on it. No, you could too if you try. Uh -huh. So do you ever feel like so. if you might have friends that you feel like not even intentionally like have an envy towards you or anything? Like, because I know me and my friends. The way me and my friend group is that we all come up, come across something that's, that can make money for all of us. We quit to put each other in the group message. Exactly. Like, let's do this stuff. Brunch this day so that we can do X, Y, and Z. Or, or I got this this game. Y'all do this, and I'm going to follow up with y'all. You know what I'm saying? We pull each other coattails. So do you feel like, do you ever pull your friend's coattail? Like, here, you could do this, that, and the third. All the time. I'm the one. Like, listen, let me tell you something. So we was out here the other day, right? I'm very cool with the person that owned this building. He and his wife, we gave it 
game. The, the man here basically said, if you write a 30-page business plan, um, it's something called Net 30s and Solid Investors. If you have 30 page business plan detail, he told us from beginning to end, I will show you when we get in the house. I wrote it all down. How to get the solid investors to invest in an apartment building like this. Because the reason the question came up, I'm like, every day I come out, my car is covered in dust because y'all putting in the building up. How is all this? I understand, you know, y'all collecting at least four to seven thousand from each unit. I would love to have an apartment building like that. Right. So I asked him how because I'm pretty sure he didn't start off with no money. He said it's something called hard money where you don't have to have any money. It's people that will invest in you. So that's my goal right now to try to get an apartment building like this for you. Collect four to seven thousand a month. You know what my friends told me? That's impossible. That's why I said I'm not friends with people. If you're comfortable or you're content or like you feel like when it's you're so easy. When you're the sky yeah. is the limit. limit. Like, Seriously, you're dreaming too low. Like, I feel, why, why can't you do it? What's so different about them owning this building than you? And that's what I put. Like, the journal, I just made this for sale. I put in it like, with some of your billionaire qualities. I said, fear is the reason a lot of people don't get nothing done because of the unknown of consistency. That's another thing. I don't care. You could be doing something for uh, four or five months, six, nothing happening. Eventually, in month 12, something might blow. Stop. It's like people just give up so fast because of Instagram. Instagram got the world weird, yeah. like, messed up. Everybody think you see it's the results or it's just their money. It don't come like that. Right. There be times, like, people, this is the part that made me mad, too. Everybody think, like, I get so much money. You don't see the parts in the house where I'll be stressed out. Like, right. Oh, I gotta pay this the more. You have your, you have your mental breakdowns, but it's like, yeah. all right, I'm gonna have this mental breakdown and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, and I'm always looking for a way. I always say, don't wait till it get bad to try to add another income. I'm constantly looking for right. new income. So on the internet, that's how I learned about the products and KDP. And also invest in yourself. Like, you know, we have like, oh, I'm not buying somebody eat people. All they do on TikTok is say, oh, sell this course or they scamming. Not everybody's scamming. Right. People ain't going to give you game for free. Like, same way I just said I had to figure out how to do certain things. People are not telling you that for free. So it's like, you got to pay how you wait to get the information. And it might, you know, go somewhere. It's, it's crazy because free. the same people that say they're not paying for it be the same people that go out every night. Y'all spending $100 and stuff like that. Like, it's measly money that you could save. To invest in yourself that you're literally wasting on going out having a good time now i'm not saying don't have a good time because life's too short not great go outside that's not what i'm saying but make sure that you have that time like i literally factor in um like investments business and stuff like that in my monthly bills you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if i say i don't want my monthly bills to go over maybe fifteen thousand dollars or something like that then i make sure that I, at least out of that 15 a good like two grand mm -hmm. is, is probably miscellaneous or or Rainy day, like, or anything or, might come up. Your car might catch a flat, and you don't got the, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah. Anything you gotta, you gotta add all that stuff in because if you don't, it's like when shit go left, it's really gonna go left. For but you. that's why I put myself in this building. It was a risk. I, you could have never told me three, four years ago that I was gonna wake up to break this house. The way I looked at it when I moved here, people was like, "Oh, you're crazy. I wouldn't do that." But I didn't look at it from that point of view. I looked at it like, "Well, if you're there, I know you're not gonna let yourself lose the place." It's gonna force you to go set up. Right. Like you wanna be around a different type of people with a different type of money now. So it's gonna force you to grow. And indeed it did because you had no choice. I just told you if you miss one print, you're a victim. Right. So you had no choice but right. to also or get put out. It's and a lot of stuff a lot of stuff too. A lot of people also see how you said you never you never would think that in all this time, like you would live somewhere that rent is high or whatever this be. The goal is not literally to Okay, I want this rent to be this high. Right. The, the goal is to live comfortably, whatever lifestyle that you want to live in. Okay. So, so it's like, and a lot of people will go from you might live in a studio that's a thousand dollars. You can't jump from a studio to them their six thousand dollar rent. Right. Right. It's their set. Like I know right. my first that's apartment. My first apartment was six hundred fifty dollars. Six fifty. I mean, I was a teenager, Should but I it was six fifty. <laughs> I my think first, my first rent was twelve. My first rent was six hundred and fifty dollars. I lived in Frankfurt. Little little apartment, little duplex, six fifty. From there, I probably went to like twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. No, I probably went to a thousand dollars. Then my next one was like twelve hundred. Then it just keep. You never want to find nothing lesser than what you, than, than your current lifestyle. Yeah. So it's like once you keep going from there, I know the place before I lived in now was about twenty four hundred dollars, and then it just keep going up. Now it was three thousand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like as time, like you never want to want to go nowhere where it's like. 
unless the, the economy just mysteriously changed and everything started going back down, the cost of living is so high right now. Right. So if you want to live this way, and not for Instagram, for your own self, when you a hardworking person, you don't want to come home to ghetto shit. Right. You don't want to come home to noise. You don't want to go nowhere where you don't feel safe. Right. You don't want to go nowhere where it's though, oh, you know what, it's a nice day outside. Like, let me see if I can figure out what pool open up. I'm going no, downstairs. No, seriously. No, seriously. And that's the thing. I never have to leave my house. I feel like everything is here. Got the market's connected, it's a comfortable, it's a quiet neighborhood. I feel like what you pay for it, you get. Like, yeah. And then another thing is, like, when I was paying uh, cheaper rents, I was seeing pipes grow into, I don't see none of that. Yeah. None, I don't feel it. So it's like, it, it's a plus, but even with, like, I, I wanted the Audi. Everybody act like that was a problem. Like, when I had got that Audi, oh my God. The way it about that car, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to go from. A 2021 car in 2023 to something lower than that. Yeah, I mean, so you're always gonna totally go up. Yes. So if this is the lifestyle you want to maintain. You gotta work for it. We're rent. And then everybody be like, oh, get a house, get a house, the type of house I want built from the ground up. I'll be asking people. And not gonna say you're not gonna get your house built from the ground up in no damn city. Yeah, exactly. And that's because I wanna go to Houston. I keep saying this. And with a house, it's definitely more like it's it's more of a security piece. And more and more maintenance. Because fix niggas, it. oh my God, let's go to that. You fixing it, Niggas and that's another thing. Your lifestyle, they will break in. Niggas, my girlfriend just went through that. Broke in her house, took everything. You ain't getting past security here. Yeah. Either been the, you ain't even getting a proof without right. uh, security. Right. So, I mean, all that play a factor in everything. It just, I feel like if you really want something, you want to get it. Price or not, like, like I said, you couldn't have told me three years ago. I would have been here. Like, I, I would, I would have like, what? Right. Never. Now it don't want to double that, and right. I'm still here. But that's because I'm trying to force myself to triple, triple the income, right? Where I could be sleeping peacefully and doing what I want, traveling the world, and still be able to live luxury. Like, right? People don't even get to that point. Like some people, they say they would be grateful if they could get two k a month. Right? We, shit, we passed that, and that's the good thing. And that's why I would tell her like when you do hair recording, she gonna be a virtual beauty. She started the podcast, proud of her. That's going to blow her up. That's going to be money in her sleep from YouTube. Yeah. By, by doing what? What you love? Sitting here smoking, we sitting here the food, talking about shit you go through. You can't beat that. Like, people would kill for that. The people got to wake up 9 to 5, go to work. It's nothing wrong with a 9 to 5. Right. But I feel like use the 9 to 5 to fund for your job, which you want, then get out of it. People's problem is they get too consent. Even with a hairdresser, like, I love the podcast uh, Behind, the, Beyond the Chair yeah. because they talk about hairdressers that you hear, but how can you get away from that so you don't forever be behind the Nobody chair? Nobody want to be 50 years right. old That's still it. having to do hair. Like, it should get to a point where, now, granted, hair is my passion, so it's something that I do. Like, it's my therapy. When I'm going through what I'm going through, I'll be like, I'm ready to do some hot shit today. Like, like on that tip, but a lot of people, you have people who hair is really not their passion. They, 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 they do it because they're talented and can. Right. And it helps pay the bills, but it's not a forever thing. A lot of shit comes with it. Like fucking arthritis, you standing up on your feet all day, your back start hurting. Like, it's factors in it. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. No, seriously. The sun just started beaming. I know yeah. I look good and all that, but. It's fire. Well, you cannot tell <laughs> But yeah, like, it's just, I mean, I feel like ain't nothing easy. Anything come easy ain't worth having. When you put in the work for it, you're going to be so proud of yourself. Like, right. So, like, it, it been days, like, where we would make 10K in a day, 10K the next day. Then it'd be days where we can't even get 500 that day. Right. And then, like, I'm an honest person. I, I even came to you. I was like, listen, right now I had to slow down on my hair because I had to get things together. I feel like people don't put their priorities first. Yeah. Or they try to fake and act like it's something that's not. No, I'm never going to fake. Like, I'm going to pay my bills first, then I'll have fun later. But the priorities always come first, and that's what I'll be trying to tell my friends, family, anything. But also, when when you do good by your good people, good shit come from you. Yeah, for like, sure. like, good shit just don't come from it, period. Like, you being who you are as a person, being a good friend, being a good sister, good daughter, you know what I'm saying? Like, good shit come from me. No, seriously. And that's I noticed that that's one thing about you. You do support all your people. Mm -hmm. Like, anybody that's, that's in your corner, your folks, you support them. Mm -hmm. Like, even when it comes down to your sister. Your sister got a hair page? No, and that's the thing. Shout her out, Speak, anyway. Speaking of her, I just got on my sister about that. I said, listen. Oh, she did. And I've been telling you since she was younger. Queen. My sister, like, I keep telling her, it's too much money in the hair industry. I told her last time, I said, listen, 
diamond will understand if you put one wig on me because I don't let nobody Shit. touch my hair but diamond, okay? If you ain't diamond, you can't touch me. And I make that clear. I, I even got arguments with people about that. I don't let nobody do my hair but her. But my little sister, she um she ordered a wig from Amazon. This is an Amazon file. Yeah. Put it on my head. And when it first got done, look crazy right now. But when it first got done, she tipped it. I'm like, girl, you know how much people and I've been told for lace? I've been told you what, uh, when you told me that she was getting into hair, and yeah. she, she used to always do her own hair. Yeah, I she said, still do. Tell her to come. I'll mention her for free. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's folks. If that's your little sister, she cool with me. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was saying. Like, when she did it, I'm like, she really did a good-ass job. Mm -hmm. Like, she need to run with that. And her whole thing, she keeps saying is people and they nasty and Girl, get the money. That shit you like, gotta do with it comes to money. Everybody right not gonna like you. Right. Everybody's not gonna and a lot of times and just like you just said, a lot of you it be your own people and that, that discourage a lot of people because your own people are not supporting you. Right. But you just gotta block that out and say end of the day, I just feel like you gotta have so much faith in yourself that what other people think will not matter. No, because seriously. like you said, everybody gonna jump in the bandwagon. What is okay to support you? Once they seek validation from everybody else, that it's okay to support you. And if you, know you don't saying? believe in you, they not gonna believe. Ain't nobody you. gonna believe in you. You gotta be confident in your like my, my sister. I told That's her. That's what anything. I said I will invest in the here. Anything you need, I will invest in her because I'm confident. Like she did this little. Uh, I don't know this was possible. She did this little two part in her hair. I don't know. I don't know about stuff like that. But I, I'm thinking it was like a front of her wig. She's like, oh no, I just do a little cute uh, U part. It was wavy and it was her natural hair. Yeah, the top. top. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know all of this. Do it. She on the phone. Uh, my wig. I, I hopped in the jacuzzi. Wig came on. I couldn't put the ball cap that good. I, I got it on with no ball cap. But she on the phone guiding me. Like, no, do this, do that. No, we need to get the money for that. People for just real. doubting me, so that's for all. Real. Stop doubting yourself. That's that's the point of it is. I was just about to say, if you have anything that you would like to say to any up, up and coming, I might want to just say entrepreneurs, anything. Anybody that's trying to get into it and start, because I don't care if you're working on a five, you should be able to have some type of side income. Do you have any advice for people? I say stay consistent. Don't care what nobody say. Stop doubting yourself and really take it seriously and believe in it. If you're confident in whatever you do, follow. I don't care if you sell hair, nails, whatever. And market yourself. Stop being so scared to post on Instagram because you feel like you're posting too much or you feel like uh, people saying or they want to unfollow you. Let them mute you, whatever. I got a girlfriend. A girlfriend. And and listen, she know I be, <laughs> I be in her comments every day. Barb, I'm talking. Shout out. Special shout out to Barb. I need you to follow Barb too. We done. She don't play about marketing like she posts at least 20 times for her digital products a day and yeah. this is every day and she got she just hit i think 50k in sales off of digital products that's what i'm constantly posting posting yeah. posting she went from uh, 500 k to 100k now she get brand deals and doing all of this from constantly posting right stop doubting yourself like um th this is crazy like people I just say believe in yourself and stop thinking what people um, gotta say. Yeah. My advice would be or benefit you right here. <laughs> my advice would be stay consistent, fuck the haters. And I would say network. Like it's a blessing knowing certain people. Six figure um, course creators. Like this is It's what I'm literally, saying. literally a blessing with knowing people. Be a good person. You wanna meet good people. Mm -hmm. Pitch yourself in uncomfortable positions. Pitch yourself in a place where you're not the most one that's getting money. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if you in, I don't know who said that, but they said, somebody said, if you in a room with, oh, it was Lady London. She said, if you in a room with uh, four billionaires, you're guaranteed to be the fifth. And Seriously? I really, I really agree with that. And I believe in bringing your people with you. If you can't bring everybody, yeah. but the Uber will be cheaper if y'all all roll it together. It That's cut true. people off. Oh, stop caring about, oh, we've been friends for years. If they're not on what you want, cut them off. That'd be people probably, y'all feel bad for the friend that been here for 13 years. If that friend is not on what you want, you got to cut them off because you're black and you're blessed. I mean, it, I was in relationships and I would tell my partner, like, yeah, I want this, stand a third. As soon as we break up, everything I was saying about your relationship came to me. Right. That told me that God holds your blessings until you get rid of who's not supposed to be around you. So you got to hang with people that you look up to. And that's, I just seen, what's the name post this, uh, little baby. I was like, see, I always do that. He was like, I hang with people that got more than me. Yeah. I'm like, that's the smart thing. Because if you hang with people that got more than you, it's only going to motivate you. If you hang with people that beneath you, you 
want to pull yourself there. Right. It's like a bunch of people trying to leech off you or yeah. look at you. Or that's why I stop hanging with people because everybody just want to come here and take pictures in front of the windows. Or they're not really in front. It's the aesthetic that you right. bring, the lifestyle that you bring. So you got to cut cut that off. Like, so what you know is that get them from around you. So I be the same people. My son, you. <laughs> My little sister and my cousin and, and my pretty, that's it. And that's on the hand. And that's the people that I know that uh, have my back if I need it. Like, I'm in the hospital, you seeing me, you pulling up, you constantly calling me, you need something. People don't do that. That's how you know who a friend is and who they're you know, who really not. Every time I get my hair done, they think I'm her hair ambassador because my whole goddamn page is her. When I tell you that's your how page you got more of me on there than my page got me on there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But that's that's the type of friends that you need. And then when I do and that, when I tell that y'all, let me add this. Her. Let me add this. It has been a couple times when I was like, all right, Zilka, I need you for this, that, and third. Mm -hmm. Everything on me. It's been times I've done that, but Zilka has never, ever, ever asked me for a discount. Mm -hmm. And there be times where I'll be like, all right, wait, this coming up to this much, but I got you for this much. Like that. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you look out for your folks, they look out for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it just, it just all and makes respect sense. respect people prices. That be another thing. How you charge a price for something, but you want to go to somebody and want and to you'll go to somebody, pay prices, but you'll right? go to somebody else to pay. And then somebody they go to Louis and pay. Louis, yeah. Gucci, all of that. It's cool for y'all to pay that because oh, I'm, a, I'm a hairdresser in the hood. I don't even care if you don't hear about your house. Respect somebody's prices. You're right. not paying their bills. You don't know what they got to go through to accommodate you. People just don't understand. You know, but yeah, you are who you hang around. Remember that. You are who you hang around. We gonna close it out on that note. <laughs> um, I wanna go back swimming. Yeah. While I'm in the penthouse, cause I ain't in no penthouse. <laughs> but I'm enjoying my time, cause my friend got a penthouse. So yeah. Don't about I, and I invite her here all the time. I know. I be so fucking busy. <laughs> I know. I know. It's Sunday, bro. So I text you. Uh, One of these days, I'm gonna have me a little penthouse somewhere, because like, you are real, real life motivation. I ain't gonna lie to you. One day, one of these days, I'm gonna have me a penthouse. I think I want a penthouse in Miami, just like a vacation home. Cause you know, I'm be right there. Yeah. I'm gonna have me a penthouse, a, 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 a vacation home one day. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that if I get my house, cause I'm, I'm about to give me a house. But um, yeah, you gotta hang around boss bitches to get boss shit. Mm -hmm. And if your friends not boss bitches and you, they really your friends, make them boss bitches. Yeah. If your nigga not a not boss, true. make them a boss. Like that's it. That's 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 how I go about things. Cause right. all my people, that's that's my people. If you support me. And I ain't no hate and shit. I got you for life. That's right. just period. No, seriously. And I support them, support you. Yeah, and right. if they not what you want, then cut them off. Stop them feeling loose. bad for people. You have to cu cut it. That's it. I don't want to hear it. Cut it. I gave you cut a it. chance. No, it's good. You're done. You're done. <laughs> you're I'm crying. Yep. Yeah. All right, y'all. It was really nice. Cool. You want to say bye? Yeah, say Love bye. on the motherfucking Love lens. Say bye. Oh. Love on the fucking lens. My fucking photographer got in a fucking pool for me today. Yes. Don't play with him. Heavy on it. <laughs> Come on, say bye-bye. Say bye for the camera. Hurry up. He running around to pull up because he just got out soaking wet. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right here. Say bye. Bye, Chief. He can't see you. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. They tell can't them to, see him. Tell them to subscribe. Ooh. Don't have no kids, y'all. Don't have no kids. <laughs> Tell them to subscribe, boy. Say subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye. Love on the motherfucking land. <laughs>